in this video i'm going to uh, give you a brief introduction to servlets uh, what is the use of servlets so basically what do you mean by servlets a servlet is a language programming language class it is used to extend the capabilities of servers so that host applications access by means of request response programming model servlets servlets can respond to any type of request they are commonly used to extend the applications hosted by web servers that is the main use of the servlets so they provide a component based platform independent method for building web based applications so whenever i want to build some web based applications performance limitations of cgi programs i can go for the servlets uh so as i was telling you right firstly i just gave you a brief introduction to java what is the use of java and what are the different components of java so i was discussing with you about different types of oops concept what is inheritance what do you mean by abstract class encapsulation wrapper class inheritance polymorphism so next i'm going to give you a brief introduction to servlets so what is the use of servlets so whenever i want to build some client server kind of architecture so i can go for this servlet so from the jsp java server pages so the response comes in it goes to the servlet and whatever type of business logic i want to perform so everything happens in the servlet and then it will be stored securely in the database so that is the main use of going for this servlet so you can see here so this is my web browser so i can see here http protocol hypertext transfer protocol so from this http protocol it goes to the http server so this is how my http server looks like and inside this it comes in so this is my servlet program so whatever is the type of servlet so it will be executed and it will be stored securely in the database So this is how my servlet model looks like. So what do you mean by this hypertext transfer protocol? So it is used for communication between client and servers. So this is my uh, web browser. So I am going for this HTTP protocol, hypertext transfer protocol, and then it is given to the HTTP server. So whatever type of request I am receiving from the client, it is given to the HTTP server. and servlets program and then it is stored securely in the database so previously i was discussing with you about html forms what is the use of font tag so how to create different types of elements for example i can create a radio button i can create a check box so all these are the different types of uh, elements that can be created by using this html forms So next, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to servlets. So, what do you mean by servlets? Common gateway interface. So, it is a standard method that is used to generate some dynamic content on web pages. So, whenever I want to generate some dynamic content on web pages, I can go for this CGI Common Gateway Interface. So, it provides an interface between the HTTP server and programs generating the web content. So they are not as CGI scripts. They are written in some sort of scripting language. So what is the use of the servlets? As I am telling you, right? So for example, I am uh, developing some student registration form, or I am uh, developing some employee registration form, uh, uh, patient registration form. So what are type of forms, front end pages I am developing? So whenever I am going to hit the submit button, so it goes to the servlet. The business logic it gets executed in the servlet. and then it will be stored securely in the database so why i have to learn uh, this kind of servlet so what is the main purpose of going for the servlet so why i have to learn servlets so using this servlet i can collect some input from the users through web page forms so as i'm telling you right so what is the main purpose of the servlets so i can present records from a database or another source and create web pages dynamically So when I want to create some web pages dynamically, so I can go for this servlets. Clear with this? So they often serve uh, serve the same purpose as programs implemented using the CGI. So common gateway interface. 
So they offer several advantages. For example, performance is significantly better. So servers execute within the address space of a web server. So it is not uh, necessary to create a separate process to handle each client request. So why do we have to go for this kind of service? So all these are the major advantages. Performance is significantly better. So whenever I want to collect some uh, pages from website, say for example, I can go for registration form or patient registration form. I'm going to collect some details from the printed page. It is stored in the servlets and finally it will be stored in the backend database. So why we have to go for this servlet? It is independent, platform independent. So it can run on any type of operating system. It can run on Windows operating system. It can run on Unix, Linux. So it can run on any type of operating system. They are platform independent. So Java security manager on the server it enforces a set of instructions to protect the resources on a server machine. Servants are trusted. So the full functionality of the Java class libraries it is available to a server. So they can uh, communicate with applets, database, software. So all these are the reasons why I have to go for this servlet. So read the explicit data sent by the clients. So whenever I want to receive some data from the browsers, clients, so it includes an HTML form, or it could also come from an applet, or custom HTTP client program. So I have to read the implicit HTTP request data sent by the clients. It includes cookies, media types, compression schemes. So all these are the different applications of servlet. So what is the main use of servlet? So far I was discussing about HTML. What do you mean by hypertext markup language? So next I'm going to give you a brief introduction to servlet. So what is the use of the servlet? They process the data and they generate the results. So the process may require talking to a database, executing an RMI, invoking a web server, computing the response. So all these are the different applications of servlet. So why I have to go for this kind of servlet mechanism? So I have to send the explicit data to the client's browsers. So the document can be sent in a variety of formats. So they can be sent as an HTML, binary, GIF images, Excel. So I have to uh, send the implicit HTTP response to the client's web browsers. So it includes telling the browsers or other clients what type of document is being returned, setting cookies, caching parameters. Clear with this, so all these are the different applications of servlet. So why you have to go for this servlet? So basically what are servlets? They are the programs that run on a web, uh, web browser, application server. And they act as a middle layer, as I was telling you, right? So they come in between. So a servlet it acts as a middle layer between the request coming from a web browser or applications on the database HTTP server. So using servlets, I can collect input from the users through the web page forms, present records from the database or another source, and create web pages dynamically. So what is the use of this kind of server? Uh, servlet? So it acts like a middle layer. It comes in between the request coming from a web browser and database or applications on the HTTP server. So using the servlets, I can collect input from the users through web page forms, present records from a database or another source, and create web pages dynamically. So they offer the following advantages. So what are the different advantages of going for the servlets? So all these are the different advantages of going for this servlets. So performance is significantly better. So whenever I'm going to uh, go for the servlet mechanism, the performance is significantly better. So servlets, they execute within the address space of a web browser. So whenever I want to use any of the functionalities of servlets, they are executed within the other space of a web browser. And it's not necessary to create separate process in order to handle each client request. It is not necessary to create separate process. 
Servers are platform independent because they are written in Java language. So as I was telling you, right, so one of the main uh, reasons why you have to go for the servers is they are platform independent. They are written in Java language. They can run on any type of platform. They can run on Windows operating system. They can run on Unix, Linux. They can run on any type of operating system. So servers are platform independent. So since they are in Java language, they are platform independent. So security management on the server. So it enforces a set of instructions to protect the resources on a server machine. So the full functionality of Java class libraries is available to a server. It can communicate with applets, database. So they can access via the sockets and RMA mechanism. So this is how my servlet architecture it looks like. So I'm having this web browser. So I'm having this HTTP protocol, hypertext transfer protocol. It is given to the HTTP server. So whenever I want to process the request and send back the response, it is given to the HTTP server and servlet program and it is stored in the database. Clear with this, so what are the different tasks a server performs? So all these are the different tasks. So from the architecture, you can understand. So what is the main functionality of server? So why I have to go for the service? Mainly whenever I'm building any kind of uh, client-server architecture, the server it acts like a middle layer. It comes in between. It is used to process the client request and send the response back to the web browser. So they perform the following task, they read the explicit data sent by the clients. So whenever the clients they are going to uh, read the data, they read the explicit data sent by the client's browsers. So it includes an HTML form on a web page or it could also come from an applet or a custom HTTP client program. So uh, they are used to read the implicit HTTP request data sent by the client's browsers. This includes cookies, media types, compression schemes. They process the data and generate the results. So all these are the different tasks performed by the servers. So this process may require talking to a database, executing an RMI, invoking the web servers, or computing the response directly. So they send the explicit data to the client's browsers. So the document can be sent in a variety of formats, including text, HTML, or XML. So the document can be sent in a variety of formats. So they can be binary GIF images, Excel. They send the implicit HTTP response to the client's browsers. This includes telling the browsers or clients what type of document is being returned. So setting cookies and caching parameters and other such tasks. So all these are the different operations. Clear with this? So all these are the different tasks that are performed by a server. So Java servlets for the Java classes. They are in, uh, run by a web server that has an interpreter that supports the Java server specification. So they can be created by using the javax.servlet and javax.servlet.http packages. They are a standard part of the Java's enterprise edition. So these classes, they implement the Java servlet and JSP specifications. So they have been created and compiled just like any other Java class. So after that, we install the servlet package and add them to a computer's class file. So they can compile servlet to the JDK's compiler or any other current compiler. Clear with this, so what are the different tasks? So all these are the different tasks that are executed by the servlet. They send the explicit data to the clients. So the document can be sent in a variety of formats. So they can be like HTML, XML, 
Here one is, so the document can be sent in a variety of formats. Binary, GIF images, Excel. So they send the implicit HTTP response to the client's browsers. This includes telling the browsers or client what type of document is being returned. Setting cookies and caching parameters and other such tasks. So they are the Java services run by a web server that has an interpreter that supports the Java servlet specification. They can be created using javax.servlet and javax.servlet.http packages. So they are a strong part of the Java's enterprise edition, an extended version of Java class library that supports large scale development projects. So all these are the uh, Java packages. So what are the different things? These classes implement the Java servlet and JSP specifications. So servlet has been created and compiled just like any other Java class. So uh, as I was uh, telling you right, so how to create a Java class and what are the different things I can perform. So whenever I want to perform some sort of mathematical operations, or whenever I want to perform, say for example, other type of operations. So what are the different things? Say for example, I'm going to install the servlet package and add them to the computer's class part. So I can compile the servlet to the JDK's Java compiler or any other current compiler. Clear with this? So till this part, whatever I'm speaking, everything is clear. So what is the use of servlets? So from this picture, pictorially you can understand. So what are the different blocks that are involved in the servlet architecture? So all these are the different blocks that are involved in the servlet architecture. So it contains a web browser. So from the web browser, HTTP protocol, so it uh, receives. So whatever client request they are giving. So it is being processed by the server. So server program it is being stored in the database and they send the response back to the web browser. So this is how my server architecture looks like. So I can read the implicit HTTP or request data sent by the clients, browsers. It includes cookies, media types, compression schemes. The browser understands they process the data and generate the results. Clear with this, they read the explicit data sent by the client. So all these are the different operations, tasks that are performed by the servlets. So servlets can be created using javax.servlet and servlet.http packages. So they support large scale development projects, they implement the Java servlet and JSP specifications. So they have been created and compiled just like any other Java class. We install the servlet packages and add them to the computer's class part. So we can compile servlets with JDK's compiler or any other current compiler. So the following are the parts followed by a servlet. So the servlet is initialized by calling the unit method. So first thing we have to initialize the servlet. And then the servlet calls the service method to process the client's request. So whenever, uh, so all these are the different parts that are followed by a servlet. So the servlet is initialized. Firstly, I need to initialize the servlet by calling the init method. So after initializing the servlet, it calls the service method to process the client's request. So all these are the different parts or steps involved in using the servlet. So servlet life cycle. So what do you mean by a life cycle? So a servlet life cycle can be defined as the entire process from its creation to the destruction. So what are the different steps that are involved? So I am just defining illustrating the steps involved in the life cycle of a servlet. So the servlet is initialized by calling the init method. The servlet calls the service method to process the client's request. So 
So all these are the different steps involved in the creation of a servlet. It is initialized by calling the init method. So it calls the service method to process the client's request. The servlet is terminated by calling the destroy method. So all these are the different steps involved in the life cycle of a servlet. Finally, the servlet is garbage collected by the garbage collector of JVM, Java Virtual Machine. So all these are the different paths that are followed by a servlet. So it is initialized by calling the init method. So firstly, I need to initialize the servlet. So the servlet is initialized by calling the init method. And then it calls the service method. So after initialization, it calls the service method to process the client's request. So whatever type you run the web browser and receiving some request, so it is processed in the service method. It's terminated. Finally, the servlet is terminated by calling the destroy method. So all these are the different steps involved in the life cycle of a servlet. So what happens in the unit method? So, firstly, I just gave you a brief introduction. So, in the entire life cycle, what are the different methods that are involved in the servlet life cycle? So, next I am going to discuss with you about each and every type of method. So, what are the different methods that are involved in the life cycle of a servlet? So, the first one is the init method. So what happens in the init method? So it is called only once. So it is called only when the server is created and not called for any user request afterwards. So only when the, uh, initially when the server is created, so it is called only once. So it is used for one-time initialization just as with the init method of servlets. So it is normally created. So whenever a user first invokes a URL corresponding to a servlet. So I can also specify that the servlet can be loaded when the servlet is first started. So that is the meaning of this unit method. So what is the use of this init method? So whenever a user he invokes a servlet, a single instance of each servlet gets created with each user request. So whenever uh, each and every user he is going to request, so it results in a new thread that is handed off to do get and do post method. So the init method simply creates or loads some data that will be used throughout the life cycle of a servlet. So public void init, it throws the servlet exception. So a single instance of each and every servlet gets created with each user request resulting in a new thread that is handed off to do get and do post. So the first thing, the first comes the init method. So what are the different methods involved in the life cycle of a servlet? The first comes the init method. It simply creates or loads some data that will be used throughout the life cycle of a servlet, life of the servlet. So after the init method, the next comes the service method. So what is the use of the service method? So it is the main method to perform the actual task. So whatever type of task I need to perform, so everything happens in the service method. Clear? So what are the different methods that are involved in the life cycle of a servlet? So all these are the different methods that are involved. The first one is the init method. So the next comes the service method. So what is the use of this service method? So service method, it is the main method. So as I was telling you, right, so what is the use of this service method? It is the main method to perform the actual task. So after initializing, so what are actual tasks I need to perform? So it happens in the service method. It is the main method. So as I was telling you, right, so as the name correctly goes, it is the main method the, to perform the actual task. So after what happens in the service method, server container, that is the web server calls the service method to handle the request coming from the client browsers. And 
to write the formatted response back to the client. So all these are the different methods involved in the life cycle of server. So each time the server receives a request for a ser servlet, the server spawns a new thread and calls the service. So the service method checks the HTTP request type. For example, it can be a get request, post request, delete, do get, do post. So all these are the different methods as appropriate. So you can see here, this is the method signature. Public void service method. So whichever method I want to call, so I am just giving here public void service method. So these two are given as parameters to my service method. So servlet request uh, space request, servlet response space response. So it throws the servlet exception and then IO exception. So whatever is the type of exception, so using throws keyword, so it is throwing the servlet exception and IO exception. So the service method is called by the container. Service method invokes do get, do post, do put. So in the service method, so you can invoke any of these methods, do get method, do post method. So I am going to overwrite do get method or do post method depending on what type of request we receive from the client. So the do get and do post method, they are the most frequently used method with the each service request. Clear? So all these, the service method, so after init method, in the service method, so whether it can be a get request or a post request. So these two are the different types of methods used in the service of a servlet class. So what is the use of do get method and what is the use of do post method? So a get request results from a normal request for a URL or from an HTML form. So this is the corresponding syntax or declaration of a do get method. So public void do get. So if it is not going to return anything, so public void do get. So I am giving corresponding request and response. HTTP servlet request and HTTP servlet response. So it throws the servlet exception and IO exception. And there is one more method, it is called as the do post method. It is comes from an HTML form that specifically lists the post as the method. So it contains all these parameters. It can go for a HTTP request, response parameters. It throws the servlet exception and IO exception. So they are the most frequently used methods. So I can go for a do get method or I can go for a do post method. And the final method is called as the destroy method. So it is called only once at the end of a life cycle of a server. So it gives your server a chance to close the database connections. So whenever I want to close the database connections, I want to destroy. So all these are the, firstly I have to start the method. So I am going for an init method. So after starting, so I am going for a service method. So what are business transactions? Whether it can be a get, a get request or a post request. So everything happens in the service method and finally it comes the destroy method. So what is the use of this destroy method? It gives the server a chance to close the database connections. So whenever I want to close any database connections. So after the destroy method, the server object is marked for garbage collection. So you can see here, uh, when you look at the architecture diagram, so you can understand this better. So how it works. So far I was uh, discussing with you about servlets, what are the different things that are involved in the servlet. So when you look at the architecture diagram, so you can just understand how it works. So it just contains a servlet container. So here comes the JVM, Java Virtual Machine. 
So here comes the servlet container. So and then uh, those the three threads, thread A, thread B, and then thread C. So all these are the different methods involved in the life cycle of a servlet. So it contains the init method, service method, and then destroy method. So it receives the client request and it sends the response back to the web browser. So firstly, so the HTTP request coming to the server or delegated to the server container. So the server container loads the server before invoking the service method. So then the server container handles multiple requests by spawning multiple threads. Each thread executing the service method of a single instance of a server. Thread. Clear with this, so what are all the different steps involved in the life cycle of a server? So from this you can see here. So whatever request it contains, whatever uh, request it uh, receives, so everything is delegated to the server container. So whatever request it receives, so everything is delegated to the server container. The server container it loads the server before invoking the service method. So it loads each and every server. So then the server container handles multiple requests. So each and every thread is going to handle each and every type of request. So each thread executing the service method of a single instance of a servlet. Clear with this? So what are the different steps involved in the architecture? You can see here. As I was telling you, what is the use of this init method? What is the use of this service method? And what is the use of this destroy method? So each and every type of method has got its own unique significance. Here with this, so what are all the different steps that are involved? So all these are the different steps involved in the life cycle of a servlet. So why we have to go over servlet and what are all the different steps involved in the life cycle of a servlet? So I am going to uh, give you some examples of tables. So yesterday I was uh, discussing how to create a table and how to create some headers. So still I am going to discuss with you about some more type of table tags. Say for example, I am going to discuss with you about uh, cell padding and cell spacing attributes. If I want to add some more cells, I can go for cell padding and cell spacing. If I want to leave spaces between two, uh, two cells, I can go for the cell spacing attributes. So let me just show you a simple example. So you can just see here. So whenever I want to start any new document, so it needs to start with doc type declaration. So it is prepended by single exclamation mark. So I need to start with document type declaration. So what is the type of document? So I need to go for this HTML document. <coughs> So I am having this HTML tag, so I can go for this HTML, so I am going for this head tag. And title, so whatever is the title I am giving here as HTML cells or cell padding, so I am having a starting title tag and an ending title tag. So I am having this body tag, so whenever I am having this table, border property. So as I was telling you, right, so whenever I am going to discuss with you about HTML language, so everything is based on tags and attributes. <clears throat> so what is the use of this attribute? They provide some additional information about my tag elements, whatever type of tag elements I am adding. So what is the use of this attribute? They provide some additional information about my tag elements. <clears throat> 
So I am having this table border equal to within double quotes. I am giving here as one. And cell padding equal to five. Cell spacing equal to five. <coughs> And inside this, I am having table row DR tag. And I am having a table header. What is the name and salary? And inside this table row, I am having this table data. So, whatever is the table data, and then I am using this Ramya, and I can say I can go for some other. Uh, So inside this table row, so I am just having this table data. <laughs> so it is having a starting TR tag and an ending TR tag. <laughs> so let me just uh, show you a simple example of this. So whatever HTML documents I want to save, so it should be saved with dot HTML extension. <clears throat> so you can see here, so within each and every cell, so whatever spacing I have given. <clears throat> so I can go for cell spacing and cell padding attributes. So whenever I want to add some cells or whenever I want to leave space between cells. So whatever type of customizations I want to perform, so I can perform any type of customizations. Similarly, if I want to add some background color to my table, so whatever uh, things, features I want to add, I can just add so. Say for examples, if I want to add some features. So you can see here, so it, it is prevented with single exclamation mark. So whenever I want to start any uh, type of HTML document, it is prevented by a single exclamation mark, doc type. So inside this, I'm having a starting HTML tag. So in case of hypertext markup language, everything is based on tags and attributes. So it is having a starting HTML tag. Inside this, I'm having this head tag. So whatever is the title, so title I am just giving here as HTML background. So it is having the starting title tag and an ending title tag. So inside this body, so I am having table border attribute. So what is the use of border property, border color I am giving here as green, background color. And inside this I am having a TR tag, table row and table header. Say for example, column 1, column 2 and then column 3. Row span. Say for example, if I want to span some two rows. So you can see there is a attribute. So as I was telling you right, so the HTML language is based on tag and attributes. So the attributes they provide some additional information about my tag elements. So whatever type of tag elements I want to. So the attributes they provide some additional information about my tag elements. So let me just show you a simple example of this. So you can see here. So whatever is the background color. So I am just giving the corresponding background color. So this is my column 1, column 2 and then column 3. And row 1, cell 1. <coughs> so row 1, cell 2. So you can see here. This is my cell 3. So row 3 and then cell 1. With this, I am just stopping today. I hope I am clear with my topics. <laughs> so today I just gave you a brief introduction to servlets. So what is the use of servlets? What are the different tasks that are performed by a servlet? And then I was uh, discussing with you about the example of the subject. If you are interested, you can go to Insta Mojo. 
So for the bootstrap internship program, they have SMC two. This is the coupon code. Once you register for the internship, you will be getting access to the PPTs, the recorded videos, the project files, how the projects are being developed. You will be gaining more practical knowledge. Once you attend this master class for twenty five days. You will be receiving a free webinar certificate, and the internship users they will be uh, receiving the internship certificate as well as a participation certificate. If you are interested, you can go to Insta Mojo and you can register for Java Bootstrap Internship Program (JSMC2). This is the coupon code. Once you register for the internship, you will be getting access to the PPTs, the recorded videos, the project files, how the projects are being developed. You will be gaining more practical knowledge. Once you attend this master class for twenty five days, you will be receiving a free webinar certificate, and the internship users. <laughs> They will be receiving the internship certificate as well as the participation certificate. If you are interested, you can register for Web Development Full Stack Internship Program. So it is going to start from 28 December and will continue till 27 January. Every day the classes will be conducted live in the YouTube channel from 7 to 7:45 in the evening. Once you are going to attend this master class, so you will be learning what do you mean by React JS, and what are the different components that are involved in React JS. So you will be learning how to develop some applications using React JS. So once you are going to attend this thirty days master class. I will be giving you a brief introduction to Java. What do you mean by Java? And what are the different groups concepts? What do you mean by inheritance, polymorphism? Then I will be uh, discussing with you about HTML. What do you mean by hypertext markup language? How to develop web pages using HTML? And I will be I will give you a brief introduction to servlets. What is the use of servlets? Discussing with you, I give you a brief introduction to React JS. What do you mean by React JS? And then I will be discussing with you about SQL, Structured Query Language. How to connect Java with the database? And finally, I will be discussing how to develop some full stack websites using Java. With this, I am just stopping this video. If you have any queries, you can post your queries in the comment section. Remaining things, I will just continue in my next videos.